going on guys grave here welcome back to the elder scrolls online and today i want to talk about some of the best settings you can run on console of course i play on ps4 but these will work on xbox as well it's gonna be a bit of a longer video than i usually post but we're gonna go over all the settings in game if you're new and you never change some of these some of these in my opinion are definitely game changing some of these are just personal preference so let's go ahead and hop right into it first thing we're gonna look at of course is video when it comes to brightness i do play on a 24 inch gaming monitor but I still prefer to have this brightness turned up. The reason being is some of the dungeons you get in are really dark. Even on a bright monitor, they're still dark. So I prefer to have the brightness turned up. That way I can see everything that's going on. Uh, this will wash out some of the just graphics in general. But in my opinion, I'd rather be able to see what's going on than really have great visuals. So this is going to depend on, once again, what you're playing on. I do play on a monitor, but if you're playing on a TV or something darker, you may want to have this turned up even more than I do. Uh, when it comes to adjust screen, I have this kind of shrank down to the smallest uh, that it will go. But like I said, I do play on a monitor, so this will be different depending on what you're playing on. But I prefer to have it small as it will go. That way, the HUD and everything on screen is very tight. Nothing's running off the screen or anything like that. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about, of course, is audio. I do have the subtitles off. You can turn those on depending on if you want to read and hear what's going on at the same time. Master volume is all the way up. Music volume is turned down a bit. Uh, it is very loud when you load the game up, so that is one reason. And also, I don't want to have loud music and combat and everything going on in-game. I use headphones. You, if you use like just speakers or TV speakers or something like that, you may want to change this a bit. The music is nice in-game, but I don't want it just kind of blaring along with everything else going on also. Uh, when it comes to everything else in the sound settings, I left all this to default. You can go through any of this that you might want to change, but... Everything on default seems to work pretty well, in my opinion. Uh, when it comes to gameplay, now this is where it's going to be a little bit tricky depending on what kind of controller you have. Uh, some people may use a scuff. Some people may use a uh, Elite controller on Xbox. Uh, some people may use the back button like I do here on PS4. That allows you to have buttons on the back of your controller to make it easier to cast abilities and things of that nature. I prefer to have my weapon swap on my back button because I do not like the weapon swap on the touchpad. Now, if you just have a basic controller, you don't have a scuff, you don't have a back button, you don't have an elite controller or anything like that, there's not a lot of options, in my opinion, in the templates. I think they should add more for better ease of use just in general because a controller is kind of difficult to get used to using in this game because there's a lot of stuff, a lot of abilities. And like I said, that weapon swapping is very annoying. If you do not have, like I said, any of those other kind of controllers, you just have a basic controller on Xbox or PS4, you can go into your... PS4 settings and go to accessibilities and map your controller buttons for whatever you would like for the particular game that you're playing. Then you can save it to your uh, quick menu here when you just hold down on your uh, PlayStation button. I'm assuming we'll do the kind of same thing on Xbox. You can go to accessibilities here and enable or disable those cu custom button assignments. So if you have this set for Elder Scrolls, you can have it checked while you're playing the Elder Scrolls online. If you're playing something else, of course, you can just uncheck it and it will go back to the basic default button layout for whatever game you are playing. So that is something to keep in mind. A lot of people do that and set their uh, weapon swap to the right thumbstick, the right uh, to kind of click it in. That way you can swap weapons easier that way and then change the directional pad to something different. So it's just personal preference, but I do feel like the ability to swap weapons is a little bit difficult on, on controller with that touchpad. When it comes to vibration, this is on in game, but I do have my vibrations turned off in the global settings on PlayStation. That way I have vibrations off in every game I play. I play a lot of shooters also besides the Elder Scrolls Online, and I'm just not a fan of vibration being on whatsoever. Some people may like vibration on in this game though, because of when you go to like a chest to open it up, you have to unlock it. You can feel the vibration of the controller when you're getting close to you know having it unlocked or breaking your lockpick so keep that in mind uh, if you may want to have the vibration on for that instance um the foot uh the foot issue here i i would say a lot of times is you may see your character running around doing something in game and your feet will actually like go through the ground or in your house it may go through some items you have like rugs and things now some of that in your home could be that you don't have it placed down low enough but sometimes it just does not walk naturally your character, so you can have this on or off if you prefer. When it comes to combat cues, I have these on. When it comes to custom colors, I have these on. When it comes to friendly colors, I have this kind of a light, almost bluish white color. 
and the brightness turned all the way down. So that way, when friendly abilities go out in a dungeon or a trial, or if you're just in the open world with friends, killing world bosses or whatever the case may be, their abilities will look like this. So you're pretty much not going to be able to see them, is what I'm going for here. Now when it comes to the enemy color, I have it set to pink, and I have it turned all the way up, and I recommend you do this with whatever color you like, but I prefer pink because it is very bright and is very easy to see. That way when an enemy ability goes out, it's going to look like this. That way you can tell the difference between friendly and enemy ability. So I would recommend turning these, like I said, the friendly all the way down and picking something that's gonna kind of just drown out on the ground you're really not gonna pay attention to and turning the enemy color to something bright like pink, yellow, green, whatever the case you, you know, kind of may be for you and turning the brightness all the way up. That way when enemy abilities are out, you know it's something that is dangerous that you do not need to be in. Uh, when it comes to prevent attacking innocents, I have this set to own. I hate dismounting from our mount and hitting someone with a, you know, a, a fire staff, lightning staff, whatever the case may be. And of course you have the guards after you. So if you have this on, you won't have to worry about attacking innocents while out in the open world. When it comes to quick cast ground abilities, this is going to be any ability that you can throw down on the ground that puts out the circle. So I'm going to use liquid lightning, for example, if you have a sorcerer. If you have this set to own, as soon as you hit the button, it's going to go right where you're looking. If you have it set to automatic, it's going to show the circle, and then you're going to have to tap the button again to cast it. So I prefer to have it on. That way, I don't have to hit the button and then hit it again. So in my opinion, quick cast ground ability set to own is the best. It takes a little bit of time to get used to. Once you get kind of the hang of how it works, in my opinion, it's a lot better than having to hit the button twice especially if you're trying to go through a fast rotation, it will slow you down if you have it just set to automatic, in my opinion. Everything else in gameplay for, you know, like your polymorphs, your stamina upgrades, all that stuff on your mounts, you can have those set to own or off, whatever you prefer. When it comes to consolidate area loot, I have this to own. That way it will consolidate everything in a big area and I can pick it up all, all at once. Auto loot I also have on. If you have a small bag, you're just now started playing, you may not want to auto loot everything. That's going to be up to you. Uh, when it comes to auto loot stolen items, I do have this off for one reason. Right now, while farming antiquities, I want to go in and grab the antiquity really quick, then I'll grab everything else. Sometimes you will get caught while stealing stuff. So if you can grab that you know, antiquity lead before you get anything else out of those uh, stolen you know, items, it's a lot better in my opinion. I prefer to go through the stolen items as well and see what's in there and then pick them up individually. When it comes to auto add to craft bag, I have this on. If, you do, or if you're not an ESO Plus member, this will be set to off automatically and it will not be set to on unless you do have ESO Plus. When it comes to loot history, I have that on. Uh, default Soul Gem here, I have Gold Purchase, uh, Tutorials on, and of course you can reset your tutor tutorials down here at the bottom. Now when it comes to the camera, this is some of the most important or one of the most important things in game in my opinion. Of course, if you want it inverted controls, that is totally up to you. Assassination camera. It's totally up to you as well, but I'll leave it on. Screen shake, I have this all the way off. It's very annoying to me, so I turn it off. Camera sensitivity, I have turned all the way up. And of course, camera sensitivity is going to be how fast you look left and right while playing the game. So to me, it's still not fast enough, but it's high as it can go. So that's just, you know, <laughs> is what it is. When it comes to first person field of view, if you do play in first person, I would recommend you zoom this all the way out so you have a larger field of view. I don't play in pers first person. Uh, the only time I ever go into first person is if I'm looting things like um, a lot of barrels or something in an area. I need to like look at something specifically. You know, if you're in third person, you won't be able to pick it up sometimes. So I go into first person for that. But besides that, that's the only time I'm ever in first person. When it comes to head bob in first person, I have that turned off. Third person is what you really want to play in, and you want the slider all the way out as well. That way, you have a wide field of view, left and right. And there is one thing you can do with this in case you did not know if you are on console. If you hold down uh, or if you just kind of tap down on the D-pad, you're going to be able to swap between first and third person. But if you hold down on the D-pad and move your right thumbstick in or out, you can zoom this out kind of on the fly. That way if something gets messed up and you were playing, you hit down on the D-pad and hit your stick at the same time and you kind of adjusted your a field of view, you can just hold down on that D-pad again and zoom it in and out, like I said, with the right thumbstick. But I would recommend having this zoomed all the way out. It makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. And when it comes to uh, the other options here, the horizontal position and offset, you can kind of see how mine are set. The reason being is I want this, the crosshairs that you have here 
in the screen where your cursor would be pretty much if you're on PC. I want this to be right above my character pretty much. I want this to be pretty much wherever I'm looking, wherever I'm going, that is what I'm going to be attacking. So if you have it set far left or far right, sometimes it will make it difficult when you're fighting something. You might be looking at it with your character, but your crosshairs or your cursor may be off of it. So I prefer to have this pretty much right above my head. It may be just a slight bit to the right, but that is perfectly fine with me. That is the setting that I prefer. Of course, you may want to change it, but I prefer to have it right over my character's head, so I'm attacking and fighting whatever I'm looking at. When it comes to interface, you can have this set however you want. I prefer to have my own line ID above my head. That way, if I'm playing with friends, they know who I am. They don't see my character's in-game name. They actually see my gamer tag on play, uh, PS4. Uh, when it comes to prevent or group revive counter, excuse me, I have that to automatic quest tracker. All this stuff is set to own. You can turn this off. It will make it a little bit harder to navigate in game, in my opinion. Uh, weapon indicator and armor indicator will actually show up uh, pretty much right here by the left of the screen, uh, kind of on the other side of where you can see my magic bar there at 27.8K. If any of my armor is broken or my weapon's broken, it will give me an indicator down there in the corner to know it needs to be repaired. Uh, when it comes to quick chat, I do have that enabled to own. I have the fade rate turned all the way up so it does not go away quickly. Uh, only no players for the chat bubble. I do have that to own. So if somebody's with you in a group and they're talking, you can see a chat bubble kind of over here in the corner. Or uh, if they're in your guild or anything like that. When it comes to self, I do have that turned off. Now when it comes to nameplates, now this is where some people are going to differ in opinion. I prefer to have the nameplates on. Some people say it causes too much clutter, uh, that it makes it lag a little bit, whatever the case may be. I've heard a lot of different things. Who knows if that's true or not? I'm not sure. Uh, it could be. Um, but I do have nameplate set to own, uh, show title set to own. All this stuff is set to own except display the name of your character uh, as overhead text. I have that off. Self, I also have disabled. Now, when it comes to group members, of course, I have this set to always. And you can kind of get the idea here. You want group members, of course, to always again. When it comes to friendly NPCs, I always have these set to targeted or targeted or injured. That way, if you're out in the world, you see an NPC, you won't just have a bar over their head when you look at them. It will actually have their name over their head. Some people prefer, like I said, just to have the quest indicators on. I prefer to have this on so I can see whatever this character is. If it's a vendor, if it's a, you know, a traveling merchant, whatever the case is, you might need to sell some items sometimes and you're out you know, and you don't have a, a merchant that you can summon that you have purchased from the crown store. And it may just be one of these NPCs that's walking down the road that is a merchant. If you have this set to targeted so you can see everything about the uh, friendly NPCs, then you can kind of tell who they are and what they are exactly above their head. But some people, like I said, prefer to have that turned off. So all of this stuff for enemy NPCs, friendly NPCs, you can kind of see I have set to always or targeted or injured. That way you can always see them when you're looking at them. Uh, when it comes to health bars, I have those on. When it comes to alignment, I have to center. Of course, when it comes to damage taken, I have on frame borders on. Uh, this is turned off. This controls the display of the overhead health bar above your character. I have that set to never. You can have this set to always. Uh, you can do it for your group members as well. I do have it set for my group members so you can see their health bars above their head within a dungeon or something like that if you're a healer or a tank or just want to know the information in general. Um, when it comes to friendly NPCs, once again, targeted, everything down here is targeted or, you know, injured or targeted. So just pretty much go through all that. Turn it on how you would like, would like it to be, but I prefer to be able to know information about everything when I'm looking at them, like I said. Now, when it comes to alliance indicators, I have that set to enemy. Group members is on. Um, display the icon above friendly players that are dead. I have that set to own as well. That way you can know if you need to resurrect them or not. And if you're playing PvP, this is a very good thing to have on because if not, it's going to be kind of hard to see who's on the ground and, you know, who needs to be picked up, who doesn't, who, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, when it comes to glow thickness, I do have that set all the way up. Target glow is to own. Intensity is all the way up. Uh, and, of course, intensity, again, is all the way up. Now, when it comes to social, this is all personal preference. I do have my text size to small. That way, if somebody in the zone, guild, whatever case is talking, it doesn't fill up the chat bar with a lot of big letters. You know, if it does, you're only going to have a line or two of each person's comment. I prefer to have it on small. That way you can see more on the uh, in the chat bar. When it comes to HUD chat display, I have this off for right now. If you have it on, of course, you can see the chat over here in the right corner. I just have this off for the purpose of making this video. Uh, profanity filter, you can choose whatever you want there. Leaderboard notifications, if you want to get notifications of friends or guildmates, 
to do certain things on the leaderboard. You can have this off or on. I find it kind of annoying, so I have it off. I have auto decline dual set to on as well. If I want to duel, I will turn this off, but if not, you'll have people all the time wanting to duel you in certain areas, and it gets kind of annoying also. Everything else in this is up to you. Uh, you can change all your colors, so like you can see, for zone, guilds, whatever the case may be. I'm in a lot of guilds, so I have a lot of different colors set, so everyone everyone that is in this different guild stands out in a different color, you know, like each guild chats in a different color, so that's all just personal preference as well. When it comes to combat bar or the combat section, my ability bar I always have set to always show. As you can see, everything down here shows all the time, whether I'm running around or not. You can set this to whatever you prefer. You can set it to don't show. You can set it to automatic. That way when you start fighting, it'll pop up, but I prefer to always have it on. Same with my health, stamina, and magic bar. I have those set to always show also. When it comes to resource numbers, this is the numbers uh, that you're going to see kind of coming off whatever you're attacking, whatever you're doing. If you're healing, you're DPSing, whatever the case is. Uh, this is going to be the bar you see above the enemy that you're fighting. I prefer to have numbers and percent. You can set it to just numbers or percent, whichever one you want, but I prefer to have numbers and percent. Uh, active combat tips is automatic. If you want to have those off, that is perfectly fine. I've just never really messed with that. Uh, the ultimate number that will show you in the bottom corner, of course, over here where your ultimate bar is, as you can see on the right side of the screen below my stamina bar, what uh, stage that's to to being completely full. If you know how much ultimate you need to cast your ultimate, you can see that number in the screen right there to know, you know if your ultimate is almost ready or not. When it comes to combat text, I have this on. This shows damage and healing amounts in the world near the targets. That way it'll spit off numbers when you're dealing damage. You'll see white numbers, green numbers, you know, orange numbers if you're critting, whatever the case is. I have those set to own as well. Outgoing, I also have set to own. Uh, outgoing damage is on. All of this is going to be turned on except for your outgoing pet damage. I'm not a big fan of having this on. You can see your pet's damage if you would like. If you're a sorcerer, though, you know it does get kind of annoying running two pets. Uh, and having more damage numbers up on the screen plus those pets kind of gets on my nerves, so I turn those off. Now, when it comes to incoming, of course, you want all this set to own. Uh, of course, incoming pet damage over time. I have anything to deal with pets. We'll just go ahead and tell you I have it off. Show overhealing, I have set to own. Now, when it comes to buffs and debuffs, this is going to show your buff and debuff bar for your character. So I have always show. I have buff zone, self buff zone, self debuff zone, target debuff zone. Uh, from others, I do have set to off. You can turn that on, but it does clutter the screen so much. It's already cluttered enough. Our buff and debuff bars on console are not that great. Timers aren't that great. So this is the one thing you can reduce that clutter a little bit with. Long effects I have on. Permanent effects I have off. The reason being, if you have whatever Munda Stone you have selected, anything that is a permanent effect, ESO Plus, it will show kind of in the bar down here. You can see, let's see if I ate some food really quick. Um, let's just eat this real fast. You'll see that my food pops up above my health bar for one hour. If I have this option here uh, for permanent effects to be on, you would also see the ESO Plus emblem and my Munda Stone emblem and all that stuff down there where the health bar is, uh, right above the health bar where that food is. And I don't really need to see those, so I just have that set to off. The last thing we're going to talk about, of course, is that was the last thing we're going to talk about, of course, uh, when it comes to account settings. That's all your thing. <laughs> um, but anyway, guys, I hope this helped you out some. Kind of equipping some different settings because I think there's a lot of settings in game that really, really change the way the game plays. I think there's a lot of settings, like I said, that are personal preference, but mess around with the settings if you never have because it is something that will make the game more enjoyable in general, in my opinion, if you have those settings set to what you like. And there's a lot of things, like I said, in the settings that are good. I wish, like I said, kind of when we were talking about controls, there was more templates to run uh, for controller settings. Sadly, that's not the case. But anyway, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Let me know what settings you're running. And if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon up in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. If you have a chance to share the video, please do. It does help out the channel a lot. And be sure to check out GT Racing. They are the affiliate here on the channel. And all their information is linked down in the description. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.